right, let's get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so very much for joining us in another live Zoom event. It's always such a pleasure to host these events because, well, we always want this interaction and we want to connect, should it even be virtually. So again, thank you so much for joining. Today we get to talk about a subject that we all enjoy, champagne. I mean, why not? It is Friday after all. And we have such the privilege to speak with Vincent to talk about his family's wines. Uh, just to give you a prop, Champagne Georges Laval. We invite you to open up a bottle. Should you happen to have one by you, feel free to grab one and enjoy this session with us. Um, also would like to thank um, Jeff and Michael from Transatlantic Bubbles for making this opportunity happen for us. Um, I know I'm thrilled. I have so many different types of glassware next to me to check out uh, the champagne and just explore and dive in. Um, we invite you to please ask questions via the chat box. Please feel free to send me a direct message and we'll somehow weave it into the conversation. We also ask uh, that at this time, if you don't mind muting yourself, so then that way we don't have any noise interference in the background. Um, and also just know if you are interested in, the, in purchasing these wines, your rep is probably signed in on this chat. Feel free to DM them directly. And if you happen to not have a rep, feel free to DM me privately and we can go ahead and get a conversation started there. And without further ado, Jeff, who, are, who is our hostess, with, our host with the most <laughs> today, please, please begin. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. Michael and Jeff Hellman, thank you so much. Uh, great to be here. The man of the hour, Monsieur Vincent, ça va? Hello, hello, hello. Oui, ça va très bien. Ah, oui. Now <laughs> anglais. <laughs> um, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Jeff Taylor, one of the uh, sales uh, associates at Morel Wine, and uh, it's my great pleasure to talk to uh, my friend Vincent Laval today. Uh, last April 2019, along with Mike Carlton and Jeff Hellman and Transatlantic Bubbles crew, I was able to uh, visit with Vincent for a, a number of hours and taste through his whole collection and uh, someone I've always been a fan of. Uh, and when you get to meet that person, it's always uh, makes it more uh, impactful. So it's our pleasure to have you for the next hour or so. How have you been? Oh, um, fine, fine. Good, good. I'm uh, very happy to be with you for my first Zoom. This is his first Zoom, everyone. So we're, uh, we'll be easy. <laughs> <laughs> and my uh, and you're, you're in your cough right now, yes? Yes, that yes. Is not a, that is not a backdrop. That is a live uh, cough. Yes. Uh, Zoom, right? <laughs> Very good. Um, I, I think the you know the question that we're all asking all our vigneron is uh, obviously COVID nineteen and how has that affected you and the winery not only with the two thousand and twenty vintage but more importantly with the two thousand nineteen vintage that you're obviously putting into bottle and and uh, elevage and whatnot. So can you explain a little bit about how you've approached winemaking with COVID as a issue okay um but mostly i want to to explain where we are we are in cumiere in uh, yeah. in the center of champagne in the historical part of champagne um my family is in cumiere since the 17th century and uh, we are very small producer we work on 2.5 hectares and we want to do the best we can so we work organic farming. Uh, I have uh, three employees to work, three and half employees, to, <laughs> to work the 2.5 hectares. And uh, we, we work in barrel. You, you can see the, the barrels, oak barrels. And um, the particularity is we make the bottling when I think the wine is uh, okay to be bottled. And with the COVID, we were not sure we can do that at the good, uh, the good date, the good moment. Right. And uh, finally, we managed to, to make the bottling the 8th of April because the wine was ready. The, the 19 vintage was very mature and um, with a lot of complexity, and, but very fine too. And uh, 
when the, the harvest is uh, is warm, the weather was warm last year. Um, the I think the aging in barrels don't have to be very long, and uh, I just uh, keep uh, about seven seven months the wine because all was okay. Sure. And we managed with the COVID. We managed to find the bottles. We managed to find all the uh, the caps and all and the company to make the bottling. But of course, we take care a lot. We have the. Yeah. I think we have a photo of uh, what the bottling line looked like. Uh, this for the 19 vintage versus uh, it was any of your previous vintages, right? <laughs> Particular <laughs> bottling. Right. So there we have not only not only masks but gloves, hazmat suit. Yes, uh, we, we take uh, a lot of care for everybody. And uh, usually we don't put the, the bottles in the pallets, in metal, in a steel pallet. Right. Uh, the, the, the bottles are just during the bottling uh, in the cab, sur lat. But this year, we uh, put all the, the bottles in the steel pallet. And uh, we stock this pallet in the court. And yeah. The days after, we uh, put the bottles uh, in the cab in pallet right. because we have the, the distance, two meters, one and a half meters between each people. Right, right. But we managed to do the bottling at the good moment and good. we were very happy for that. <laughs> we, we look, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> uh, well, we look forward to the uh, the COVID cuvee coming out in a couple of uh, years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, COVID yeah. cuvee is good. Exactly. But um, that's just proof that uh, Vincent is meticulous in everything, not only in the vineyard, which you'll see some of the photos of the vineyards later, but also in the cellar. Um, it's a very clean, pristine winery. And um, to, to see you in a full hazmat suit just goes shows the extent of what you'll go to to uh, make sure that you're doing wine making wine in compliance with what uh, what nature has given you <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit more about about the history of the winery you said multi-generations since the 17th century <laughs> but really for George Laval Champagne George Laval um, it really started in 1971 and two monumental things happened in 1971. Your father went from selling grapes to Nagosh uh, to being a, a, what we call a grower producer, an RM. Uh, what was the reason for that in, in 1971? What, what sparked that change? Mm. Uh, so we are many generation of vine growers. My, uh, Great grandparents sell the grapes before my grandparents, uh, my grandfather, who was called uh, Lucien, the father of George, my father, yeah, yeah. Um, produced few bottles. We found some bottles in a cave of a cousin uh, when this cousin died, and uh, we taste some bottles last year, like that. And the particularity of the George Laval estate. He, my grandfather, my grandfather, my father never used chemicals, pesticides, never used uh, herbicides, and uh, never used chemicals, fertilization. And in uh, 1971, my father uh, went to a meeting and uh, with a farming technician, like that. Uh, who explained uh, the risk about the pesticide uh, for the health and uh, for the, the plant, the, 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 the development of the plant, mm -hmm. and of course the pollution of the water, the soil. And uh, my father decided to continue to work the same way we work in the family, in Cumier. And, and um, before it was normal, Vine growing, <laughs> and since 1971, it was called organic, and, and there were only Sorry, certified organic uh, since 1971. Uh, there were no certification in 71, okay. right. but there were only seven people, seven vine growers in Champagne who work organic. Wow. Um, among these seven 
seven estates. Uh, there are three who never use pesticide and four who decide to stop. They use a few few years and they, they stop because they, they, they know it's good for the vine, not good for the nature. Yeah. And, you and uh, go ahead. Sorry. And uh, and my father, of course, go to the the meeting with the uh, uh, the technician, and uh, he read a different thing about uh, engineer from INRA. Maybe you know INRA; it's uh, National Agronomic uh, Research. Right. Director uh, write some books uh, um, on the toxicity of the of the pesticide. Uh, he saw the um, uh, the film, or he read uh, some something from Jacques Cousteau, who explained we found some pesticide in ocean. Of course, right. they were not there. So that uh, uh, strong is a decision to continue to work the same way. Of yeah. course, it needs more work. Pesticides are here not to have biggest harvest, but to have less work in the vine. Sure, and of course, to make uh, more money for petrochemy. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, your, your father was so fastidious about being anti-pesticide and keeping organic that in 1971, the, the normal practice of most of the Champenois was to have helicopters literally dump pesticides from the air. And he was so nervous about getting any pesticides on his vines that he actually took the pesticide and hand sprayed his neighbor's vines so the helicopter wouldn't fly over his neighbor's vines and possibly mess up his vines. Is that correct? Yes, yes, it's correct. Um, we are in a, in a historical part of Champagne, so the plots of vine are very small. Yeah. If you don't use pesticide, we don't want to have the pollution of the pesticide from the neighbors. And yeah. My father wants to be friend and to have friendly uh, relation with all the neighbors of the people because they, they, this is our friends in Cumier. And uh, you don't want, and uh, the pesticides they use uh, are authorized. <laughs> right, right. And to be sure to don't have the, the pollution in our plots, he do that he, by uh, in the morning, uh, he, he went to the helicopter uh, base and he took the pesticide and by hand he, he sprayed on the neighbor's vines <laughs> to be sure the spray are not going to our vines. Right, right. And the neighbors, the neighbors, the, the, the owners of the neighbor's vines didn't know that. They thought this is the helicopter. <laughs> that one was okay. <laughs> but then, and, uh, and we make some, uh, some swaps of vines too. To that's have what I was going to ask about you. The neighbors to have bigger plots of vines and um, and me when uh, uh, my father was uh, out of work in 1996 1996 and me I don't want to spread uh, the, the pesticide uh, to the neighbor wine I go to, to to talk with them and explain we don't have any uh, disease on our vines all is okay and uh, I can uh, spread uh, the same uh, uh, treatment, <laughs> the same than, than me, yeah. and all is okay. And we have to speak together if all is okay, and we continue like that. And like that, we can make the swaps because we have good relation. Right. So that just so everyone knows, Vincent is so fastidious about not getting the pesticides that he's you've swapped for vineyards that are next to your other vineyards, so you can you can not have that that carryover of pesticides from your neighbor and all that so that's shows you the extent that you've done and how many we'll get into this a little later but how many different parcels do you have in that 2.5 hectare alors i have uh, half uh, half an hectare uh, in chambrecy 50 kilometers from cumier yeah. and in cumier i have half an hectare in les chênes uh, one hectare in les hautes chèvres 0 0.15 hectares in the long of Viol. <laughs> and, uh, and three different plots of vines. Three different plots. OK, great, great. Um, oh, there we are. 
We can see this is a lecaftoma. Uh, here we are on the top of the vines in lecaftoma, uh, just in ovile. Uh, this is the limit uh, the, of the vines in Cumière. You can see the village of Cumière. And les chênes are just uh, on the left, just uh, near the river, right. just down. And you said, and the, uh, obviously, Cumière is a very historic part of Champagne. You just mentioned Haute-Rivière, which is obviously where Dom Perignon is from. Dom Perignon, the Dom Perignon Abbey, is just uh, 200 meters from these plots of vines. Yeah. Yeah, so yes. talk about, uh, you know, kind of the, and you the original can, spot. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, in Cumière. Cumière is South Face. Uh, you can see this is uh, like a uh, um, Roman amphitheater. And uh, uh, just the river man, in, it just uh, down the, of the hillside. And uh, all is uh, the best for the very good maturity. Uh, traditionally, in Cumière, we harvest firstly in Champagne. Right. Uh, of course, with the warming changing. <laughs> uh, uh, global warming? In English, global warming? Yes. Climate change? Yeah. Climate change, yes. Right. Yes. Um, some, some south, uh, um, some vineyards in the south of Champagne sometimes can harvest before because uh, there are less clay, less uh, shark in the soil and uh, the, the, the grapes are mature before in Cumia. But this is not competition. Huh? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, of course. Um, question, when, when you got these plots from your neighbors, how long did it take you to convert them to organic in your, did you start farming them immediately or did you have to wait a couple of vintages? Alors, when we took the, the, the neighbors, the, the, the first uh, vine, the first plots, um, we have to wait the fourth harvest right. to be uh, organic. Okay. Right. Right. So the three first harvest, I sold the grapes. Right. Or sometimes uh, I take off the vines to replant new new vines. And, and when you replanted, did you use your own, did you do a massal selection from your own? Uh, it yeah. depends. If I previous <laughs> the, the, the arrachage the, uh, to take off the, the, the vines, um, uh, two times I plant uh, some cuttings from my own vineyards. Right. Uh, I have a friend, we, we make the crefage. Right. And, um, and uh, we, we can plant in Les Chênes, Chardonnay in Les Chênes. We have a, a vine of Chardonnay, which was 55 in Cumière. Usually in Cumière, it was more Pinot Meunier or Pinot Noir, but we have some old vines of Chardonnay, and uh, I took the, the cutting. You're being modest. How old are those vines in Ochev? Very old, right? Yes, yes. The, um, for the 15, uh, vin the 14 uh, vintage of Leo Chev, I still have a, a vines which was planted in 1930. 1930, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Amazing, <laughs> amazing, <laughs> awesome. Now, now for the 15, the oldest was planted in 47. 40, okay, <laughs> a, a, a relative youngster. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you, you just mentioned you took over from your father. You graduated in 1991, I think, and then you fully took over in 1996. 1996 was your first vintage. Yes, yes, but I, it, it's official. Sure. Right. Uh, I work with my father uh, since two, oh, uh, 1991. In fact, I work in the vines with my father to plow the vines on the tractor when I was 15, 15 year old, because wow. my father disliked to, to do that. <laughs> wow. And, uh, and uh, of course, when we were young, we work in the vines. Sure. And I began to make the, the, the blend, the assemblage with my father when I was 19 years old. Okay, wow. How, since, since you took over fully though in 1996, so you have now 24 vintages, quote unquote, under your belt, or about to be 24. Uh, has your winemaking approach changed at all? 
you talked about global warming, so you've had a you've had a pivot, is the word we all use today. Not only pivot for global warming, but pivot for COVID and, and everything else. How have your wines evolved since the you know the '90s wines you were making? Obviously, '96 a great vintage to to start to make your own wine. <laughs> yes, yes. But we are very lucky in Cumier. All the vintage are very very good and particular each year. Yeah. I don't change uh, the 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 way <laughs> Mathilde told me some words. <laughs> she helps me. Mathilde is doing well. She's doing well. Uh, I don't change the way. We all work in barrels, uh, natural yeast, and we uh, and sometimes not natural. If we um, we uh, we f I think. The, we need to help the fermentation, but it's very rare. But sure. we want to be transparent, clear. Right. <laughs> well, I, I definitely want to. I want to get into the two wines that we're uh, we're, we're going to talk about. But if you could just, you've kind of touched on it already with the barrels and all that. But could you talk about your, from from the bottles, uh, from the grapes being picked through élevage, first fermentation, to second fermentation, and everything else? Yes. The. Um, uh, of course, for me to, to produce uh, the, the, the wine, it begins in the vine. So we take care of the vine. It's why we have uh, uh, employees, a lot of employees. Usually in Champagne, one employee is for three hectares. I have three employees for 2.5 hectares. Wow. Uh, we want to make all the work by hand. Uh, I can show you, I uh, have a, a vine. Just, I took it now. You can see the, now it's very in advance. We we, chan, we we spoke about the global uh, warming. We are the 12th of June. Usually the flowering is in the uh, beginning the 15th of June. Now the flowering is finished. We can see the the the, the, the fruits, and uh, we uh, I think we are going to to harvest in the 18th to begin in the 18th of August. It's wow. Very early. So for yeah, for years you've harvested in September, I would imagine. Yes, yes. Yeah. But uh, for many years now, we harvest in August. In the, so global warming in effect. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course, we are going to to work to have um, a lot of aeration. I can show you by end with all of that. We are going to take off these small leaves, like that. What? To have very good aeration of the of the grapes, yeah, it's a lot of work, but it's very <laughs> very good for the grapes and after for the for the wine. Sure. Um, I want the the harvest is made by friend. A lot of friend come because I want it to have very good energy for the for the harvest. It's good for the wine after. I have a small press, traditional press. Um, yeah which respect the grapes. The, the grapes don't fall for very high. Uh, high. <laughs> it's just one meter high. And the cocard press, yes. Yes, it's like cocard press. And uh, uh, we don't have oxidation, no, uh, no uh, the first use just come when we press the, the, the grapes and not before. Wow. Oh. Very good press. Uh, all is uh, fermented in, in barrels. And uh, with the global warming, we can change the, the date, of course, of harvest. Sometimes we can harvest before the high maturity to keep the freshness in the wine. Or sometimes, like 2018, I wait because the weather was very good and we have a lot of mature minority, even if I taste the, 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 the fruits. Yes. Uh, and uh, I wait to have very good maturity. It depends sometimes, but it's when we do the work in each vine, I know the vines, and uh, we, when we taste the, the grapes and we, we can decide if we have to wait or we have to, to harvest very quickly. Sure. And after the aging, of course, in barrel change, it depends on the taste. And when the, the harvest was uh, with very mature and very warm, Weather, of course, the gene is sometimes uh, shorter in Berlin. What? And um, let, uh, let's talk about um, the bottle I have. 
This is the Cumia Brutnicher. I think you have it as well. Yes. Parfait. Yes. Uh, this is my, uh, my last, my, uh, comment dit, my dernière, my last bottles, my last bottle of Cumia 2017. <laughs> but we have it all at Morel. Yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, in 17, we have um, uh, we harvest in uh, the end of August and the beginning of September. Okay. And the weather was uh, uh, very wet in the end of uh, of August. We have uh, some uh, some rain. It falls uh, 30 millimeters of water, and on. Uh, grapes which were near the close to to be mature, and it was very difficult to harvest in Champagne, very uh, good uh, good fruits. But at home, George Laval Estate, we have uh, we I have one people more to to work in seventeen, and we do all the works very by hand, very precise work in the vines, and we manage to harvest very good fruits. Some old vines of Meunier, we have to, to make some uh, on the, uh, uh, trier just to take off some old trees, but just few, few berries. Not Anna, and after all, it was clean. It was very good. When Anna comes back, we have a, a photo of uh, the Pinot Noir uh, from Cumia from this vintage, which just looks absolutely beautiful. Yes, yes. Uh, we have some pictures if you want. Yep. Yes. Uh, I, uh, Vincent, a question from uh, from Jeremy Noy. Uh, what what makes Cumier so special? If you could sum it up in a few sentences, what makes Cumier so special? You know, the the south face of Cumier, the exposition of Cumier, the topology of the of the the, the inside, go. and um, you can see the short. Uh, fine, you can see. <laughs> we, we can see a few. <laughs> but we have just uh, 20 centimeters of soil, and after it short. And as we work organic, the roots are going very deep in, in short, and we have um, a lot of minority, salty taste, and complexity in the vines. The, the Cumier uh, is a, a blend of 40% uh, of Chardonnay, 40% of Pinot Noir. You see, this is the last uh, Pinot Noir we harvest in 17. And 20% um, and of Pinot Meunier from all vines too. Right, right. And you just, you briefly talked about, uh, can you talk more about the terroir of uh, Cumier? We have uh, different plots of vines and uh, the, the rate of, of clay change. Uh, if you are in Le Chen, just down the on the on the east of the village, just down the Dompernion Abbey, uh, we are just uh, 15, 20 centimeters of soil with less clay than in Le Chèvre. Here in Le Chèvre, you can see there are more clay in the soil, and but just after it's the it's the chalk. Chalk, yeah, and that that chalk definitely chalk. comes. Wait, sorry, sorry for my accent. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> That, that chalky minerality definitely comes through on the palate with this wine. Um, yes. And as we, we work with uh, a lot of respect, we respect the vine, we respect the, the vinification in barrels. We don't add anything, just it, it's natural. And uh, you can taste the, 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 the real uh, uh, taste of the wine. You can taste the energy of the wine and uh, the length, it's very You don't, you don't even own a it. tank, do you? Sorry? You don't own a uh, inox, no, no stainless steel anywhere, right? I have some steel tank, but just to receive the, the juice when I press right. for the debourbage, the, the juice stay uh, one day in the tank for the sedimentation, and after just by gravity, uh, we, we put the, the, the juice in the barrel, and the, all the fermentation is in barrel. And uh, when it's sur lot, is it under crown cap or bouchon, uh, cork? Uh, for the first fermentation, it's not cork, it's caps. It is, okay, 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 great, great. Well, I want to I want to talk a little bit more about um, the wine in the glass. That I, have you poured yourself a glass yet, Vincent? Yes, I have my glass. 
Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Um, I've just, the, the nose uh, is kind of beautiful, wild flower, honey, um, a little bit of, uh, I call them uh, pink lady apples. You can see the color, the red fruit in the, in, the, in the color as well. It has this beautiful kind of copper hue to it. And um, it's absolutely gorgeous on the nose. I, I've had it open for about an hour and uh, let it kind of warm up to uh, temperature. And it's just, just yeah. full of, full of uh, vitality, vitality and energy. Um, the finish just has this beautiful chalky minerality and uh, quite, quite lengthy as well. Yes, yes. And be careful of the temperature of testing. Here we are in the cab. It's 12, 13 degrees. Sorry, it's not Fahrenheit. It's wait, wait. degrees. <laughs> Celsius degrees. And uh, uh, I think this is the good temperature to begin to, to taste the, the champagne. And after it can, the temperature can high. It's not a problem. And, uh, and the glass, you, we have no, not food, but good glass. Here I'm taking the, the glass, uh, which is a uh, uh, mouse uh, made. <laughs> oh, hand blown, hand blown. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, uh, I have a question here as well. Um, an often overlooked element uh, of early harvest is that we have days where the weather is warmer at harvest uh, and for the first vinification. Does this have any impact on how you have to work? Um, uh, I'm assuming in a small cellar that you might have to be more sensitive to the outside temperature as well, or Hannah, did I answer that? Did I ask that correctly? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I understand, but hey, I don't think I understand. During the harvest, <laughs> is that the, 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 the high temperature? The, the, um, the, it, but we, we make the, 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 the fermentation in calf, so yeah. And in small barrels, right. the little volume, small volume, and like that, it's good. Um, maybe this year, in for the 2020, right. <laughs> uh, if we are going to harvest in the middle of August and the, the temperature is going to be very high, uh, we are just going to harvest in the morning at the, um, mm. when we are going to 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 wake uh, the when the sun is. Right. It's rising. Yes, yes. Go to to the vines, and uh, at noon we stop to to harvest because yeah. after the temperature is too high, the afternoon. Sure, sure. And, uh, and I don't know if I can cut in Vincent and and Jeff, but uh, for people who, who maybe don't know, in Champagne, the harvest is staggered by villages too. So so Cumier will harvest before other uh, other villages. Um, you know, Cumier will harvest, you know, not at the same time that Ambonet harvests necessarily or, or Aviz. It'll be a different, different days. So, uh, so the, the, the harvest is staggered. And, and even Audevillier and Damery, which are right next door to Cumier, is very different. Uh, you know, Audevillier is right in that picture uh, that we saw at the line, but it's a very different climate than Cumier. You go right over the border and um, and and right over the border into to Cumier is a warmer warmer place. Uh, so it's kind of amazing. Cumier yes, is a facing south that is warmer warmer than Opal yet. <laughs> mm. uh, Vincent, I know this is 2017 quote unquote base, but is it all 17 fruit? I know years ago you would combine some vintages but uh more recently i think you've been doing single vintage uh bottlings quote unquote yes sorry jeff I... oh, it, it uh the the 2017 cumier yes is all 17 fruit no no reserve wine no no it's just uh, 2017 fruits and uh because in uh i have some reserve wine but I keep this wine for uh, the, the, another cuvee, which is called Garenne. And uh, we is made with the grapes from uh, Chambrecy, 20 kilometers from Cumier. And like that, it's going to be better for Chambrecy because of course it's not the same exposition, it's not the same soil. And uh, if you make like a Solera, yeah. the wine is better and have sure. more energy too and more complexity. Mike and Jeff, have I seen that wine stateside yet? I don't think so. 
They just have some demi sec, I think, <laughs> because I don't produce a lot of these bottles. Yeah, we, I need to we go to only, Connecticut. That's what you're saying. It's, we've only I mean, just demi -sec. It was one restaurant that that had it for for their demi sec. Yeah. I think to go with foie gras, right, Jeff? That's yes. Right. It was uh, Blue Hill at Stone Barns, and wow. I don't know if they still have any, but they did have some. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about the demi sec and the foie gras soon enough. Um, <laughs> one last question about the Kumia, the Brut Nature bottling, before we move into the Le Chien. Um, in addition to Jeff and, and Michael's uh, disgorgement being about six months later on the 750s, the Magnums are disgorged even later going on two years, uh, correct? Yes, it's correct. The Magnum is the same vintage, the same assemblage, except one year in 14, it was just uh, from one plot, we saw the plots, it was the calf Thomas. Just for this year in 14, the Magnum was the, the, the come from this, this vine. But for the other Cumier, uh, it's vintage. Now we just disgorge uh, 2015, vintage of Cumier. So it's two years more in uh, sur that. And, uh, and I'm happy to say that we have uh, a little bit of the 14 and the 15 uh, Brutnitscher in Magnum at Morel in addition to the 17 uh, uh, 750. So we can talk to your sales representative about that and we can definitely uh, get some Magnums to you as well. Um, yes. And I produce uh, 500 Magnums 490 magnums each year <laughs> of Kimia. Keep 10 for yourself. <laughs> Perfect. No, to have your wine out of magnum is even, even more special. Um, let, let's move into the Le Chien, uh, which is, uh, you said it's a half hectare parcel? Yes. Yeah. Half hectare par parcels, and uh, it's only Chardonnay. 100% and, uh, and the particularity of Le Chien is just a uh, uh, on the bottom of the hillside, and uh, the maturity is uh, more than in the other plots. Uh, it's uh, and um, it's very. Uh, we, you can see on the top the, the trees. Uh, it's the Ovilé Abbey, Dom Perignon Abbey. Oh, right. And are the those the, are the those the Chen, the oaks that you're talking about? Is that what the vineyard gets its name from? And uh, the vines, uh, the terroir is very old. And the, the yield in Le Chien, the yield in Le Chien is not very high. It's a, around um, 8,000, 9,000 kilograms by hectares. And sometimes with the 17, uh, it's just uh, 4,000 kilograms by hectares. Wow. In, uh, in 16, it was 8,000 kilograms by hectares. So how many bottles did that result in? How many, how many I bottles? produce in 16, uh, 1,700 bottles. Wow. <laughs> I, I should mention that for next year, the 2017 Le Chien will only be in Magnums. So if you yes. see the 750s, they were made by Rudy. <laughs> yes, because the, there were some frost uh, in Le Chien in 17. And uh, as I produce 900 bottles or 450 magnums, I think it was better to produce just 450 magnums. Sure. And I <laughs> and, think... Uh, go ahead. Uncle, go ahead, go ahead. And um, now we are going to test the chaînes, just 16. And and song, while you pour that, I just want to talk about how, how beautiful this vineyard is in terms of biodiversity and the grass in between the vines, these beautiful kind of yellow flowers. Um, yes. And then can you if look, you, if you see to the right, that's your neighbor's vineyard. Yes, of course. <laughs> it's very brown. The organic method is the best to, to have a lot of flowers and a lot of diversity of flowers. Um, and of course, the, the phone, the insect, uh, rabbit, a lot of uh, hérisson, me souviens jamais, comme on dit, uh, and a lot of, of life and the diversity of the life. Yeah, yes. beautiful. Absolutely. And of course, it gives all the, 
the, the diversity, the complexity of the flowers in the, in the vines too, in the wine, sorry, in the wine. Uh, head, hedgehog is, uh, thank you, Jamie. Dutton. Hedgehog, hedgehog. <laughs> give us on anglais hedgehog. <laughs> hedgehog. And uh, if you have the grass, you can see here, you, you imagine the roots are going deeper on the soil than if you have no competition with grass, if you have uh, chemicals fertilization and uh, uh, yeah, in our vines, the roots are going very deep and it gives out the fineness, the complexity, the length of the, of the champagne. Yeah. And um, uh, I'll show you just uh, according to the, uh, the, the fertilization, this, uh, these vines I showed you last, uh, last time was, uh, come from Les Longues Violes. And in Les Longues Violes, I don't add any fertilization since 2003. Nothing. And you see wow. the vines, it's okay. Wow. In Les Chênes, uh, I just add something. Last year, I don't add anything. I didn't add anything. No fertilization, no compost. Of, of course, when I say fertilization, it's compost. But mm. It's very, very low. Of course, we taste in the, in the champagne after. <laughs> and now, Anna, you have a bottle of this in front of you, I believe. Yes. Indeed. Le Chen. Perfect, perfect. And uh, obviously, Le Chen, uh, a little bit smaller production than the Cumier, 100% um, Chardonnay, as you said. Is your, uh, is your élevage any different in the, in the Le Chen than it is in the, the Cumier, uh, Brut Nature bottling? Alors, all the, my, my press is a 2,000 kilogram kilo, quoi. 2,000 kilogram capacity. And we uh, separate all the, 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 the juice according to the origin of the grapes, the different plots of vines. And, uh, the fermentation is in uh, small barrels for Les Chênes. Uh, the, the barrels you, you, you see uh, in the pyramid of barrels, uh, Les Chênes uh, uh, fermented and aged in these old barrels. The oldest barrel come from 1999. Okay. And uh, it's uh, 2,025 liters barrels. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And the aging is the same, we make the bottling uh, when all the vines, the wine, sorry, uh, the, for all the wine, the aging in barrel is the same because yeah. this is similar, but of course the taste is different. Sure. Perfect, perfect. And just a reminder that we have uh, this wine in good supply as well. Um, that's why we're showcasing both of these wines. There's some other wines that Vincent makes that uh, we have that we can, we can uh, talk to your sales associate about. Um, I, I know I'm curious, I'm, I'm watching the time here. We've had such a nice time talking to you. Are there any other questions that are outstanding, Anna, that I might not have asked? No, we're good. Um, we thought we'd do something fun. You're, you're right there in the, in the cellar, in the cave. Maybe do a little riddling or uh, disgorge something for us? Yes, yes, I can disgorge if you want. I think it's fun. I can disgorge a, a bottle of Les Longues Viol. Perfect. Uh, Scott, my friend Scott Hanwerker just asked if we could talk about Longview for a second. So, um, Les, Les Longview is a plot which is in the family for many, many generations. And uh, we are just going to, I'm not okay. going to this. <laughs> but uh, now the Longview, which are going to, which is our salt, sorry, uh, come from the 2012 vintage. But I find uh, a 2015 vintage. Ooh. Just, we are going to, to taste it. You see, it's okay? Yeah. Hello, I can explain. We have a, a sediment, yep. which is in the cork now, here. And we have some air here. And I'm going to move the bottles. And when the bubble of air is going to be on the sediment, I'm going to open with the pressure, normally, <laughs> the, the sediment is going to, I, I just look the, the camera if it's okay. Yes. One, two, three. 
Yes. Yeah, salute. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's, it's okay. It, the, the, the... No, we got, I think Anna even filmed it, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're good. going to taste in the avant-première. Yeah, the, 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 the only problem is you're the only one who gets to taste that, and Michael and Jeff and Jeremy and Anna and I are all salivating right now. <laughs> yeah. We, you can have more. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> we have some. <laughs> Perfect. And this is exactly, uh, Anna, can you go to the photo, my favorite photo of, of Vincent? Yes, yes, when we were in the cellar. Right. <laughs> this is what a tasting with Vincent is like. You go in for what you think is a half hour to an hour appointment, and you end up spending all day. And eventually foie gras and magnums of demi-sec come out. And I just, I just love this photo. This is from my colleague, uh, Rob Fritz, who visited with you uh, two years ago, I guess. And, uh, it just perfectly encapsulates the, the spirit of you being the bon vivant and your, your pursuit of, you know, joie de vie and all that. It's just, uh, this should be uh, your, your picture on your business card or something. <laughs> I just love it. I just think it sums up you perfectly. Perfect. But of course, we produce champagne. It's a pleasure to share our, our bubbles and our <laughs> joie de vivre. <laughs> <laughs> But um, thank you so much. I know we're, we're running low on time here. Is there any other questions? This was, now this is interesting because this is a photo from the 2019 harvest. No masks, no social distancing. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, 2020 uh, might look a little different than this photo. Go ahead. We don't know. Maybe here in Champagne, uh, there are less COVID and we hope and outdoor we can in the vines maybe we can have a or of course maybe we can be so close i don't know i don't know <laughs> we hope it can be like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i hope so because uh, yes, yes. harvest and all that it's a very communal thing right you have a group of people that get together for those couple of weeks and it's a bit you're spending 18 hours a day with them Sometimes, you know, between being in the vines and breakfast and all that. So I hope that, uh, I hope that we can figure this out by, uh, by harvest time. Um, one, one last question that I, I, I have uh, for you is you talked about having 3.5 employees <laughs> for your 2.5 hectares. Mm -hmm. um, what, are you, what are you doing for the next generation of, of Champenois? Are you, uh, we, in English, we have a thing called pay it forward. Um, are you teaching others about uh, organic uh, farming? Um, or do you have a stage that's learning under you or your, your son or your daughter? Or, um, what, what's, what's, what do you see the future of Champagne and your impact on it, I guess? Alors, the future of Champagne, many people, alors, me, as we work organic, we are in association, we were in association to uh, exchange to have uh, to talk with the other people which uh, are organic who are organic sorry and uh, now there were 120 people in the association i was the president of the association during four years mm -hmm. uh, Mathilde, my wife now she works to the association right. and uh, and uh, uh, this year we have uh, organized a visit to to speak about our method to to work in the vines and uh, the theme was the vinification, organic vinification in barrels, and of course the tasting to explain how oh. respect the nature. If you respect the water, of course the wine is better. <laughs> I think. Yeah, and I, I think it's and more uh, complex. And yeah, uh, this is the there's one other thing I mention, the, um, and that is that one of Vincent's former employees, who was with him for eight years, actually started his own winery in the Jura. Yes, yes. Bruno Bienname. Oh, right, yes. right. Yes, yes. Yes. Bruno came uh, in 2008 at home. He never worked in the vines. And in 16, he uh, go to Jura to, to have his uh, own uh, uh, winery, estate. Yes, it's a good friend. <laughs> Bruno bien aimé in Jura. Perfect, perfect. Well, and the uh, 15 is good. <laughs> <laughs> such a tease, such a tease. 
but I can, I'm, I can vouch that the 2012 that we have in stock at Morel is fantastic. And it's, it's a legendary bottle and it's a very special bottle. Um, it's, unique, it's unique, it's special, of course. In, this is a very rare plots of vines in Champagne, which never receive pesticides. Ever. And, and no, it's unique because never pesticide. And since 2003, no fertilization, nothing. All is natural in the vines. And uh, for many generations, we work the long girl like that. And this year, I want my, my son, Solai, Solal, my first son. He, uh, he make the palissage alone in the, in the long viol. He's a musician, but he's, he comes at home uh, to... He's a, to he's a drummer. ...during the summer, and uh, he make the palissage alone. And he said, be careful, you work the same than your grandfather. <laughs> he said, oh, 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 I am in stress. <laughs> well, I, I, I had the pleasure of meeting him as well when we were there in April. And I remember there was the whole Champenois band. Um, yeah. You yes. how, how great it is at Vincent's when you go for a tasting. His son is on drums. Thomas Barbachan is on bass. You hear the the uh, smoke on the water uh, guitar riff as you walk in. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite an amazing, amazing uh, tasting. And I, we were there for God knows it must have been five six hours. Um, so so good. Uh, we have a question. Speaking of music, uh, speaking of is this is from Ryan. Is there a music that your wines are most enjoyed to while listening? Does your son play, quote unquote, the right music? What kind of music does your, your, your son's at music school, if I remember, right? In, in Paris or in? Uh, oh, in Lyon. 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 He, play, uh, he plays uh, jazz, uh, comme on dit, uh, funk, funky, just funky. Funk, funk, funk. Funk, funk, yes, yes. <laughs> the name of the band is Cadora. Maybe you can Celil Cadora. Celil Cadora. I can can write you. Give me that. Give me the translation. <laughs> hey, it's good. Excellent. Very good music. Excellent. Um, <laughs> any other questions? No. Vincent, every time I see you, I, I'm I I I I'm left with a smile. You're such a your wines are beautiful, but you're even more beautiful. You're such a great person. And uh, it's always a pleasure to speak with you and to see you at La Fette. And hopefully I hear La Fette is gonna happen in some capacity uh, this year. So I look forward to, uh, to hopefully seeing you stateside or maybe in another Zoom. And everyone, if you didn't hear, this is Vincent's first Zoom. He's never done it before. <laughs> um, but so, what a, what a, I, uh, thank you so much for your maiden voyage. Um, thank you to Mike and Jeff. Uh, really, Transatlantic Bubbles is a labor of love of really just these two men. Um, and the fact that they have one of the greatest portfolios in New York of grower producers is really a testament to their, uh, their love of, of champagne and their, and their vigneron that they, that they uh, represent. So, um, Thank you again, Vincent. Merci beaucoup. Thank you to your wife for uh, helping out with the filming. And uh, <laughs> Jeff and Michael, thank you. Uh, just to wrap up, um, remember that uh, we have a good amount of Laval available at Morel. Please uh, hit up your sales associate, your, your sales rep. Um, if you don't have one, you can uh, email me or, or DM me in a, a Vino Jeff on IG or Anna Christina at 772 something yes something like that you, you can find us find us call call morel and uh we'd love to get you some of this wine because i'm hoping that after you uh met the winemaker it makes a little bit more of a uh, impact for you and how special and how rare these wines are and how lucky we are to have them so Vincent, merci beaucoup thank merci, you so much merci. bye bye merci. see you all soon <laughs> bye bye ciao bye, bye everybody bye, bye.